software. What is that? Star Wars. More than a hundred years have passed since the beginning of human expansion in space. During this time, humanity has grown up and become stronger, united by the iron hand of the Empire. The Imperial Navy, supported by the patrol, ensures that the Emperor maintains power throughout all of known space. But, the true power belongs to three giant corporations controlling everything on all inhabited planets. Life there goes on under strict control by the system. Only space grants freedom. But are you ready to pay its real price? Station Coriolis, this is transport. They are one, two, three, six. Heading on course. Expected time of arrival, 25 minutes. Roger, they are one, two, three, six. Waiting your arrival. Good luck. Unknown contact detected. We have guests. Or they are one, two, three, six. I am under attack from unknown fighters. Well, let's actually start a new game. I uh, just uh, did a couple of uh, testing things. Oops. So, we have the first contact. That's my craft! Took a fucking ship, damn it! <laughs> As I was starting to say, I, I wasn't aware that the, that the second uh, introduction sequence would just start. Uh, anyway, this is uh, Star Wars. Um, since I had a lot of success recently with uh, with Master of Orion, uh, thanks again for that. I think I I'll stick with this. Pro uh, leading up to this project, I thought about what I'm going to do next, and I've considered staying in this sort of space genre or space. Be more more like, and um, but I just, but I decided on a pretty weird genre with this game because this game is a little bit 
of a weird story that I'm gonna tell you now. Um, basically, I think it came out like somewhere in the middle of the first uh, decade of uh, our current century. And um, I think 2005, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm, I, I may be wrong. Anyway, uh, I didn't pick it up during the release because it was sort of like a very niche game and not very well known for reasons that will become obvious to you in a minute if uh, it hadn't become obvious to you yet. Uh, anyway, but I picked it up during a GOG sale a few years ago because uh, one of the user reviews was sort of saying, imagine you were playing Freelancer but with bottle skate elements. And I said, that's not two games that I've seen together. But I both like them, so let's give it a shot! It's only it's only a few euro anyway, so why not? And that was pretty fun, and I like these weird um, strategy role-playing game mixes, which this is. Yeah, the, this, the Freelancer comparison is only because it's a space game and you play spacecraft that, 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 that you can freely modify. But it's more a space tactics game than a space simulation, because you never really have manual control of, 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 of the fighters. You only tell your pilots what to do and they'll try to do it. But you have, but, but, but you can't specifically maneuver them. Anyway, um, this is it. It's a space tactics game with a lot of role-playing game elements. So let's get get this thing going. You need to choose your hero's skill tree. There are four different spe speciali specialities. Good. Uh, piloting, gunnery, rockets and systems. Yeah. Basically, there's a few specializations that we can choose for our main hero, which is this guy. As you may have already seen from the quality of the voice acting, um, the game was not made by native English speakers, and it shows. Yeah, not only in in the voice acting, but also in other information text all 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 around the game. So, I would kindly ask you to just o overlook that. It bothers me too a little bit, but I think the underlying gameplay is really nice and. That it's not a triple A game in terms of presentation and general quality, I think it's okay. In any event, let's give our hero also a name. Let's call him Boss Man for funsies. Uh, with a capital B, maybe. And we can pick one of four specializations. Um, let me talk about those that I'm not gonna choose. There's an electronic warfare specialization. Basically, when you have that... Um, well, basically, you can learn most of the things Never mind the specialization, but several things will become cheaper to learn. Basically, if, if I have um, electronic warfare, then all this uh, basics of ship systems and the follow-ups will be will be cheaper, and some aren't even available if I have other specializations. Electronic warfare is a pretty interesting system in in this game because an electronic warfare specialist can like shoot down enemy missiles coming your way and repair your own ships at the same time. So it's kind of fun. But we don't really need that in the beginning, nor for our main character, so I'm not gonna pick that. I think the most obvious choice is missiles. Missiles are pretty interesting, um, because they're very effective, especially in the early game. You do lose a little bit of money, because refilling your missiles do, does cost money, because you're not finding quite as much, especially from the better ones. So if you're playing this for the first time, I would recommend you to do, choose the missile specialization, because it's, it's, it's pretty decent, and it helps you out in the beginning a lot, so... There's that, and there's gunnery, for which you can gain better better skills with weapons. But um, as we'll see in a second, we already have a have a second pilot in addition to our uh, in addition to our hero, and he already is a gunner. So having two of them at the same time, I think, is a little bit redundant. So I'm not going to choose that. I'm actually going to choose piloting. Basically, we gain we gain easier access to um, better piloting skills, which helps with our defense and not getting shot down. Which is good because then we don't have to lose money on buying new ships for the ones we've lost. And most of the other things we can also learn. Like we also can can become a pretty good gunner, though we don't have the special gunner skills. Uh, we can also use missiles, but we have no special missile skills that we would have as a, as a missile expert. And we also gain some leadership abilities because we're with a hero. So I think it's a very well balanced all around tree, so I'm gonna go with piloting. Alright, let's continue. Not sure why my mouse acceleration is so bad here now. Anyway, I'm not gonna choose it. That's really a little bit weird. Anyway, we also have another pilot, as, a, as I mentioned earlier, Ace, who already has basic flying, basic gunnery, and uh, also a special gunnery skill. Um, let's actually give him Keen Gunner. Don't think he has a, has a ship that has missiles equipped. Nope, he only has a ship with one big gun. So let's 
get that's it, it's making him get better at gunning. And for our main character, we should uh, we should choose some basic piloting. I'm also going to choose quick learner. When choosing quick learner, we gain more experience in for every experience we earn. So it's nice, but that will make us kind of weird, uh, kind of weak in the first mission. We actually have a ship that has missiles and also guns. I'm gonna choose basic gunnery. Without basic missile usage, you can't really use missiles effectively, so I'll probably not use the missiles until I get that, but after the first mission I should have enough points to um, learn basic missile usage and be able to use them in a pinch. Alright. Let's move on. Here, between all of the missions, we can outfit our ships. We actually have... Oops, sorry. We actually have three ships right now. We have one ship each for our pilots, as I already showed. Uh, Yari for uh, for Ace and uh, Naginata for, uh, our, our, for, for our hero. The Yari just has a big gun, but, but it's a pretty maneuverable ship, so it will suit Ace pretty well. This one is a sort of all-around missile boatish kind of ship. It's They're pretty decent for beginner ships and the enemies will run into at the beginning don't have better ships than us normally. So they're nice, we're gonna buy some upgrades in a minute. And we also have our big capital ship, the Star Wolf. Where we where smaller ships can land and repair and also refill their missile stocks for instance, which will become uh, useful in a few minutes, uh, in, in a few missions in the future. So, and it also has guns. And because it's pretty durable compared to our other ships, it will be our sort of the vessel that we want the enemies to shoot at because even though it can't really evade any shots it does have enough durability to just uh, ignore it for a while and um, after a while we we would have shot the enemies down whereas all the ships that we have are pretty vulnerable if they if they get hit even just by pretty weak weapons or missiles then they'll be in trouble soon so we'll try to avoid getting shot at as much as much as, much as we can by getting better piloting skills in the beginning and basically have our have our cavalry ship tank for us as much as we can. We also have a third ship, which is a special purpose fighter, as the game calls it. It's sort of very good for the electronic warfare system that I talked uh, a second ago, because it has a lot of slots for special systems, and also two small guns, but no rockets, as as compared to the Naginata that that we are piloting. If I'd chosen to become an electronic warfare specialist, then I would have then I would have used that ship. I'm going to keep it though. I could have, I could just sell it and maybe get better stuff with the money, but I'm just gonna keep the ship around for a while as a sort of replacement. And if we should get more, more people into our group, then maybe one of them will be an electronic warfare guy, and um, I'm gonna have him use that ship. I am gonna buy a better weapon though, for the little amount of cash that I have, to basically upgrade my small guns to the next best one, minigun. I'm not gonna go into the stats of the stuff. Uh, in most cases, just here, both of them do a damage of 2, but the Maxim has a rate of fire of 180, and the minigun has quite a bit more. It has 270, which is quite a bit more. So, this is just an upgrade. I could just sell them, but I'm probably gonna sell them later, so it doesn't matter. Mm, I'm gonna keep the rest of the stuff around, because I don't think there's anything worthwhile buying at this point. Well, actually there is. There's an emergency repair system for sale. Um, what things you can see for sale is random. Yeah, I mean, there's some limitations on what you can see depending on what your current mission is at, but in general, the th stuff that you can buy is randomly de randomly de determined. So um, if you play this game, you may not be able to see the same things that uh, you see here because of the randomization stuff. So let's buy this. And let's include this in, this in the system slot here. Basically, with this troll subsystem, I can make emergency repairs on on the on the ship. The system will be used up, so it's kind of expensive, but uh, it's better than dying and having to re replace the ship. Because buying a new ship like this, I don't 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 know if they have anything to sell. Yeah, they do have actually one to s one for sale right now. Would cost six thousand credits. So I'm repairing it for 300 in order to, for to in, in, in order to not have to buy an additional one for 6,000 is I think worth it. But anyway, so let's check the news. Um, there's some voice acting here, like for the news. I'm gonna um, watch all the news in the beginning so that you get some feeling of the background uh, of the universe. 
it's not extremely well done. Yeah, basically we have one big sort of like evilish empire and uh, and three corporations uh, in in the background who are trying to uh, gain more influence. So th there's that. Nothing too special about it. But let's just listen to news. Sensational news has been received from reliable sources. An archaeological expedition has found irrefutable evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations. Thousands of cubic kilometers of space filled with artificial objects that are apparently alien in origin. A new expedition under the Aegeus of Inoko Corporation is now being prepared. Its aim is to carry out a detailed study of the found wreckage. Good. For the last week, there have been 11 attacks on transport craft in the Prosperine, Escaflon, and New Kyoto systems. According to reliable sources, pirates attack in large groups, acting impudently, with total confidence, using standard pirate tactics. In all cases, they managed to escape before the arrival of the authorities. According to the second-in-command of the patrol, the situation is under control. Strengthened patrols are covering the sector. All right, we also get a few letters from Ace, which are not voice acted, so I'm gonna do that. But it's sort of interesting to learn about the various ship types and uh, learn from it. So let's uh, let's actually read that too. Hellcap, you know, I've already captured a lot of pirates, smugglers, and other scum, so I have not much to tell. You know, let's call it my space scum classification. There are many pirates united by two common qualities: they're always low on money, and they really aren't good pirates. If they were, corporations would hire them. So pirates are constantly on the run, robbing traders, selling plunder at the first bar, but you can't really earn much that way. The result is, well, they never have enough money to buy good craft and weapons. I'll send you descriptions of, of the pirates' usual fighters and some thoughts about how to fight them. Ace. Oh, 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 and yes, some bad news. All what I've written here is true for about 95% of the pirates, but sometimes you will run into real professionals, and then you need to handle yourself real good. Okay, enough scary tales. Yeah, we'll find out soon enough. Alright, let's do first bring, uh, briefing on the pirates' brigand. Well, as promised, here's some thoughts about pirate ships. The most common fighter they have is the Brigand. It's a very old fighter. You might see it as, at some sales. Although it costs virtually nothing, it can be equipped with a heavy cannon. The pirates don't have the money for this sort of upgrade. All other characteristics of the fighter are either moderate or miserable. The worst one is predictability. The ship can be blown up from a pair of hits. But even this fighter might be dangerous when used in backpacks. Note, more, more experienced pilots prefer to use something better, like the Yari or the Excalibur, for example. Recommended tactics. Because the armament of a single brigand is rather weak, can be ignored at the beginning of the fight, so you can handle more dangerous foes. Good tactic is to lure near a mothership where it will be quickly eliminated by the turrets. But we have the big wing of the small of a big wing of the small predator. It's hard for a gunship to evade their attack. In such cases, use missiles to reduce the number. Okay, so only dangerous when in when in, when in large numbers. Got it. Hatchet. The next popular fighter with fighters is the Hatchet. It looks simple, but nevertheless is able to take a lot of hits and can carry three installed system modules so it can be used as a special purpose fighter. Weak armament to light guns without missiles, and because of their technical ignorance, pirates don't use this fighter as a support craft. Because they're fucking idiots. Recommended tactics. It's a threat for, it, it isn't a threat for well-defended ships, but it's usual to see a pirate's Hatchet with an installed ECM system, so I wouldn't use missiles against them. Cheap pots may miss, and it's just a waste of waste of the expensive ones because they, you can just kill them in a few hits with guns, you know. Naginata and Hammerhead. Sometimes you see pirates on gunships, such as the Naginata and Hammerhead. Although these, although these crafts have have not got good flight characteristics, they might be dangerous because of their ability to carry missiles. Gunships must be destroyed first because even one can deal a lot of damage. Because of the hairy armor, armor is better to concentrate all guns and missile fire on them. Recommend a tactic, att attack with full force and concentrated fire. Alright, let's do standard control. Customer, liquid oxygen production factory oxygen, tall system in Phoenix sector. Standard patrol mission, we need to make a reconnaissance patrol along a route. Guys from oxygen want to be sure that there are no unwelcome guests in the systems. Ace's commentary, reconnaissance patrol is an easy way to get some money. Okay, but we did hear about some pirate attacks in the news, so should be aware of that. Almost says that line oxygen, sh oxygen station has just flight warded. All right. Why is the performance so bad? Anyway, said we're gonna fly toward it. Then we're gonna do that. Another thing I'm gonna do, and which uh, nothing really tells you, is you can actually form your smaller craft into wings. Like right now, I could I could command uh, both these guys on an individual basis. There's really no good reason to do that anyway, though. So I'm gonna 
make them form a wing of two pilots by dragging them together. Okay. Right now I can sort of move them as one unit. So let's have them defend the mother ship. Performance is kind of bad, I'm not sure why though. It's an old game and this computer is really well. Sometimes happens, not sure why. Huh. This is Oxygen Station. Identify yourself. Well, this is Mercenary Unit Star Wolves arriving to complete your orders to patrol the sector. Oh, we've been waiting for you. This is a simple task. Standard patrol run at nav points. We're ready to pay you a thousand credits. Go on. We've been finishing the reactivation of this plant, but our guys from security haven't arrived yet. Fortunately, this part of space is almost desolate, so there's nobody around. In fact, your reconnaissance mission is a formality. Well, I don't think so. I spoke with the techs, and I also read news that the, that pirates have been spotted in this region. But it's just this gossip, but even if it's true, it's just another opportunity for you to get cash. You are bounty hunters, aren't you? Okay, go on. Transmitting the route. Nav points Alpha and Beta are located inside an asteroid field. Point Gamma is just an old inactive portal. There's an old deserted observatory at Nav Point Delta. It's used as a warehouse. Inspect all four Nav points and report back. Alright, seems easy enough. Where's the catch? Where's the catch? Catch. All right, let's go. All right, let's move to Alpha. Real performance is a little bit troubling. Did I put in a frame limiter? Don't think I did. Huh. You know what, let me actually stop this recording here for a second because it's a little bit annoying and I'll check what's going on here and we'll be right back here at this moment in a few moments for you but for me maybe like half an hour or so to figure out what the problem is. I'll see you right back. Hello and welcome back to Star Wolves where everything should be working again. Not, not the keyboard though. That's weird. Sometimes I have this bug that when I switch out of the game to start the recording and the keyboard really doesn't doesn't work for some reason. Anyway, but the performance is better. So that's that. Anyway, let's uh move up. Now it works again. But not escape. Ready. Mm -hmm. what? So there's nothing of interest here. Let's head on. Alright, nav alpha is clear. And let's move to beta. Tab also doesn't work. <laughs> Pretty selective. I can still press uh, 1 and uh, the colon to get to the ships, but uh, not tap and escape. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to beta. We can also speed things up. Enemy contact. Well, enemy contact, what do we have? A brigand and a hatchet. Let's so actually take out the hatchet first. Trying to tell me that control also doesn't work. No, pa no stop pausing, okay? That's crazy, man. Just attack it. What is there to do? On my way. Some technical difficulties here for some reason. I don't know really know why. Doesn't seem to like switching. It doesn't seem to like switching out of the game to start stuff, which is a problem, to be honest. All right, let's take out the hatchet, guys. Could you maybe please attack it? This is not attack. This is just move toward something. What the freaking hell? Well, at least the mothership is doing its job, but our our escorts aren't. And okay, now, please shoot at this. Ready. No, we're just gonna fool around and don't do shit. Okay, seems reasonable. <laughs> Huh. 
Because I need to find another way to record this because this way it doesn't seem to be working because it does have tapping out issues. Huh. Alright, good to know. But this only sometimes happen. I've, 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 I've seen it happen in tests that it didn't happen. Anyway, to kindly tag that craft. No, I'm not gonna try to focus on it. Tack it, yeah, thank you. Well, that wasn't too hard. I got hit. Oh, and, oh, and everything works again. Strange. Anyway, um, after we've killed enemies, they might drop loot, and our uh, and the Star Wolf can actually pick that up. It does need to be close to it. Like this one, like this loot over here is probably too far away. And since we really need all sorts of money that we can get, I'm actually gonna have it go over there in order to pick it up. So move up. I'm gonna speed it up though. Okay, pick it up. Thank you. Now let's move to Gamma. So we found some pirates, including a trading ship apparently at Beta. Let's keep that information for our mission report. Strange, the portal looks brand new. Well, maybe too many pirates seem to be there. Okay, what do we have? A hatchet again, and is that another brigand? Oops, another one, this one. Brigand. All right, let's try to take out the hatchet first this time. No, can, can you maybe do that? Ace also has a special ability, the sniper shot, where that I can activate only once per mission, but uh, when I do, his next shot will become more accurate and also more damaging, so I'm hoping he'll be able to just take one of these ships out in the first salvo. In case there are more of them, because if, if there's a gate, then maybe there's even more enemies around than just these two. So let's try and check it out. Pirates, they're running through the portal! Attack! Apparently the taking output didn't quite work out, but the patch it is pretty low. And there's a Naginata. Ooh. Alright, so it's engaging Star Wolf. That's kind of good for us. Let's take it out. Full force. And there's another hatchet. Okay. That doesn't matter too much. Come on, shoot it down. Before it makes another attack run towards us. Come on, guys. Shoot it down. You can't hit shit, apparently. Alright. But Star Wolf is, is, seem to be hitting it uh, well enough. But it does have four guns, which none of our other ships has, so... Even if it only hits rarely with it, it has a higher chance to hit just because of the pure mass of guns. Alright. The amount, not, not, not the mass. Alright, we also need to pick up that. So that we need to go lower. Because three, because space is, is three-dimensional, we sometimes have to go uh, up and down too. I got it. Continue to guard it. As we've seen, Star Wolf has a pretty big shield, and even that got dented, and we got a few dents in the armor. It doesn't matter much. You don't have to pay anything for the repairs of Star Wolf as long as it survives. It's really no deal, no, no big deal at all. Pick that st stuff up. All right. So that was Gamma. Apparently, let's still move toward it in case in, to check out if there's anything more around. But let's do this times four, like. All right. Anyway, I mentioned that the game sort of is lacking a little bit in uh, pro production quality. However, the, I think the soundtrack is really nice, and as we all know. Having an, epi having an epic soundtrack makes everything a little bit more epic, so... There was actually a, a political meeting uh, on Voice of IP yesterday that um, I'll talk more about in a second. So we've been to our F points, let's go back and get our prize. Uh, that, um, that sort of went on longer than all of us anticipated and uh, so I started to, to, to listen to the Witcher 3 and uh, the um, Pillars of Eternity soundtrack. And that made that a whole lot of more epic. Anyway, that, that trailer's here for some reason. Are they 
sort of is, is this a legal operation we're not sure we, we were told to, to, to take out every possible resistance along the route so we'll take you out we can just randomly at attack people if, if we want if we randomly attack military or, or police though then they'll actually be able to, 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 to put up a really decent fight especially if they have much bigger ships than we have uh, m much better ships than we have basically um most equipment in the game can sort of be categorized into one of three generation of st generations of stuff. The things that we see right now, including our own ships, are mostly Gen 1, which is sort of outdated at, at this point. Generation 2 stuff would be what um, sort of was used by the military up until recently, or still is, seeing some limited use by the military, but they're trying to re replace it. And Gen 3 is really the top end stuff. I'll probably use these terms more often in, in the future. But right now we're still sitting at Gen 1 stuff, which is older stuff that can still see some limited use, but not by the military, and um, it's only for private owners, mostly, and, and pirates who don't have shit and all that stuff. Alright, let's move on. Let's go back to our... Um, Quest giver, I wanted to say. To our contact! So that we can get our thousand credits. So we become more rich. At least a little bit. I think shooting down these transports and getting their cargo was actually more than. was actually worth more than a thousand credits. Uh, this is Oxygen Station. How's your flight? I received a message that you found something. Well, so much for a formality mission, as you called it. We had a real battle with pirates. We should be paid double. Uh, 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 nobody asked you to fight them. It was a reconnaissance mission, not combat. So the battle was your own initiative. I heard a patrol of paying rewards for shooting down pirates. Of course, if you have the pr proof and an escape pod with a pirate in it, well, in any case, just report it in. Alright, reporting in. Alpha is clear. There were some pirates in a transport at Beta and also some pirates at Gamma. Oh, by the way, there's also a portal there and uh, from what we've seen, it's in the hand of the, the pirates and they're using it to bring in reinforcements. But Della is clear. Let's call it clear. Oh, our signs uh, are that they are preparing to attack the station while it's unfinished and the turrets are offline. All they need to do is just destroy the security forces and to... Uh, all that you just need to do is to destroy the security forces and land troops. We will ask the navy for help. They give these pirates a good thrashing. At the same time, this, the, the fact that the pirates are here explains why the portal is experiencing problems. Thanks for the job well done. You helped a lot. Wait, what, what, what happened with the portal? Why did you thought it wasn't working? Well, since a few months ago, all ships that passed through the port have disappeared. Construction was hectic at the time, so nobody checked the portal. It was just closed down. But it was still possible to get to us through the portal, and this saved us. A group of technicians who had a distress call came and promptly deployed a new portal, so communication was restored. Since then, we've always used a new portal, and we're going to examine the old one after the station was launched. Okay. Well, you have a good life here, so what's next? Well, they say that the Red Corsair is back, and that he was able to organize all of the pirates. Maybe he also has a hand on this event. It's possible that the old portal was redirected to the pirate sector, so all ships that left you fell into their hands. And now they think they're strong enough to capture us. Us? Well, the navy will show them. Uh, Roger. Good luck, Oxygen. Dwarves are leaving. So let's leave. And navy rapid deployment forces are arriving. I almost feel sorry for these pirates. Yeah. Ships that they use are actually... Are they Gen... No, they're all Gen 3, actually, from what it seems like. Wait, let me check that. This is the Bident and this is the Trident. I think the Trident is Gen 3 and the Bidens are Gen 2 ships, but I may be wrong. Anyway, we could technically attack them, but then they'll give us a good thrashing for all intents and purposes, so we're probably not gonna do that. Let's just leave. Got our... Got our credits, we shot down a few pirates, got some loot. Let's call it a day. Mission accomplished, yeah, we're gonna deport. Depart. I think I also got some experience. And income. Because we because some of the some of the pirates jettisoned and we got their escape pods, we were able to um Sell the escape pods to the patrol, so we got some additional cash out of that. And we also got experience. So let's um, teach Bossman how to 
let's self teach ourselves how to use missiles so we can actually use our missiles in the next episode, in, in the next mission let's keep the rest mm, ace can't really learn anything with a nine he could learn missile usage but as i said he really doesn't have any missiles in the ship so it's really not much much use all right um are there interesting ships? Where well, the hammerhead is actually sort of interesting. For some reason it's well the shield isn't better, but it has better armor than the Naginata we have. It doesn't have better maneuverability though. Well, it does have worse speed. Anyway. This a gunship technically would be useful, but uh, we already have a battleship. I think the Naginata is actually better, which is why it's more spe more ex expensive too. In any event, uh, I'll probably check the store off screen and sell our stuff. Um, one thing that we can sell for a really large amount of cash is actually the um, transport con containers that partly we picked up from the maybe pirates that were at, uh, at at Delta. I'm not sure if they were pirates, but they were there. There wasn't supposed to be anyone there, so we did what we had to do. Yeah, right, 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 right. So I'm gonna sell all of that stuff off, off screen, buy a few things, and uh, then I'll see you back at the start of the next episode where we're gonna take on another mission, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.